is on here. Uh, that's just a visual aid for you guys. We can talk about, you know, the difference between um, a concealed carry firearm and a home protection firearm. Um, there's also some improvised weapons here. I got a tourniquet. I got a med bag. And, you know, we can talk about all that different stuff. I wanted to be able to ask. Hey, Eddie, good to see you. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the one I would go with as well. So, you know, what is the Trident Shield channel? And I'm going to turn up my gain here so you guys can hear me a little bit. Uh, hopefully that, that helps a little bit. Hey, Eddie, how's the sound? All right. So anyways, the Try and Chill channel, our podcast, we're going, you know, we're a, a consulting company that specializes in reaching organizations, right? So we train Fortune 1000 companies how to be safer and how to deal with active assailant, active shooters, and uh, as well as security consulting. Uh, we do that for schools as well. We do it for faith-based organizations. So one person we don't do that for is for the individual. So we created this YouTube channel to try to bring that to you guys. So I, my goal, my mission has been always to save lives. All right, thanks for that, the sound check, Eddie. So it's been to save lives. So I'll give you a little bit about myself and then I am promise I'm gonna answer here. So why should you listen to me? Um, you know, well, my background is I was grew up a poor kid uh, in the inner city of uh, Massachusetts, you know, around Boston. And, um, you know, I was exposed to violence at an early age, um, got into, uh, you know, fighting early to kind of try to uh, work my way up the cool chain, kind of fell in with the wrong crowd and uh, became a punk till I was about 20. Um, and then at one point when I was 20, I decided, hey, I'm going to do something. I'm going to end up dead or in jail. So um, I was an atheist at the time. So I was like, how am I going to redeem myself? Um, you know, being such a low life, uh, being a punk. And I decided that, you know, hey, I'm going to go serve my country because I was a patriot. You know, I, I love my country. So I tried to find the hardest thing I could do. So um, this was back before all the hype about Navy SEALs. So um, I decided, hey, um, I'm going to go be, you know, a Marine. A Marine had, they had these badass commercials back in the day with the chessboard and the gothic music, you know, <laughs> oh, and, you know, striking uh, people on the chessboard was badass. So that's what I wanted to be. But unfortunately, at around 10th grade, I decided, you know what, I'm, you know, about a month in, I said I was too cool for this. You know, I was a big kid and I, you know, I started lifting. I lied about my age. I started bouncing in nightclubs and, and my whole life went a different thing. And that's why at 20, I was looking for a reset. Um, so they were like, Hey, yeah, uh, we, we, you know, sit down kid, you know, let's see high school diploma. I'm like, I don't have one. I have a GED. And they're like, uh, get out of here, dummy. We can't take you with a GED. So I was like, man, all right, I can't be a Marine. So what am I going to do? So then I'm like, okay, uh, Rambo, Rambo's cool. All the new Rambo movies are coming out. I'll be a green beret. That's kind of badass too. Right. So I walk in there, same thing. GED is no good. I'm like, man, what am I going to do? Um, so I'm like, okay, uh, Air Force. Well, uh, but I don't know what I'm going to do in the Air Force. They weren't even working. So, of course, you know, Air Force, they never work. But um, so I'm like, Navy. I'm like, I don't want to be in the Navy. You know, I like girls. I don't want to be on a ship with a bunch of dudes. Um, you know, this is, I'm dating myself. This is 1992. Um, and I'm like, holy smokes. All right. So I'm like, wait a minute. My friend, uh, David Bradley, I hope he's watching, uh, was a CB and he got to carry a gun and he was driving it. You know, he got out after a few years, was driving a crane. I thought, you know, making some good money. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'll try that. So I went in the Navy, sat down. They're like, let me, you know, where's your high school diploma? I told him I had a GD. They're like, get out of here, dummy, but leave your number because special programs come up. So a few months later came by and, um, and uh, they gave me a call and they said, hey, we have a new special program. Come down. We want to see how dumb you are. So I went down to the recruiter office, took the test, smoked the test. Now everyone's calling me. And um, 
So I said to myself, okay, I'm going to give Navy first shot. They're the first ones to talk to me. So they wanted me to, you know, they were like, you want to be a nuclear technician? I'm like, nuclear technician? Like, what the heck is that? You're talking to the wrong cat here. They're like, no, you did really well on these tests. We want you to be a nuke. I'm like, what's a nuke? They're like, oh, you know, you work on the nuclear reactors and submarines. And I'm like, submarines with a bunch of dudes? No, thanks. So anyways, so they came up with a couple of cool things. I'm like, listen, I'm going to go to lunch. By the time I come back, um, you better have a cool job for me. So I said, fine, cool. Let's, uh, you know, I go to lunch and come back and they're like, all right, Hey, we want you to be a gas turbine dude. And I'm like, you know, drive around, work on these big fan things that fly hovercraft that, you know, you, you know, that go onto the shore. And I'm like, yeah, but they go on big ships. So that's a no. So finally I'm getting ready to leave. And they're like, you know, Hey, do you, have you ever thought about being a seal? And I'm like, like a sea lion, like a sea world trainer. I love sea world. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I would love to do that. They're like, no, 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 no. A Navy seal. And no one knew what those were yet. You know, I mean, GI Joe had one, but he didn't really do anything cool. And, uh, you know, there was Johnny cash, or not Johnny cash, uh, Johnny quest. They had a guy and there was a sea, but no one knew what they were. And then they slid this description over me that read like a James Bond novel. And I signed up for six years, went through and did 16 years in the SEAL teams. So I did 16 years in the SEAL teams. I, you know, went to places like um, Iraq, uh, Southeast Asia, Kosovo, all over Europe, uh, South America, Colombia. Um, you know, did serve with America's heroes, America's best and brightest. And I, I absolutely love my job. Um but unfortunately, uh, towards the end of my career, um, which I didn't know was going to be the end of my career, um, I lost my little brother to heroin. He got hooked on heroin and died of complications to that. And uh, I decided I was going to walk away from my career at, you know, 16 years with no pension, no nothing, and uh, wanted to join the war on drugs. So I joined the Boston Police Department. Um, I was there for four years, most of it on the SWAT team. Um, and again, loved my job there. And, uh, but I realized pretty early on that, um, I was on the wrong side of the equation that most of the people I already met, um, were already victims that already had some innocence lost, you know, because of the way our justice system works. We, you know, proactive policing is a hard thing to do. Uh, it got really hard, um, during the Obama administration, but, and, um, so I wanted to get on the prevention side of business. I couldn't do it yet. Boston cops make good money. I was making good money. So I said, Hey, you know what? Um, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to stick here until something changes. Well, something changed. My son Connor was born and he had a learning disability. So, um, me and my ex-wife at the time decided we were, you know, uh, we were going to throw as much as we could at my son's uh, learning disability that a short time later being diagnosed as autism. So we moved to Virginia uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, to slow it down and throw as much time and assets at trying to help my son. Um, I needed a job because making good money up there, police departments in the South don't make nearly enough. Uh, so uh, with my background and contacts, I needed a transition job. And I got a job bodyguarding a guy worth $49 billion. So I got to see what security looked like when money is not a problem. And uh, so I bodyguarded that family and was treated well, got to do things I never thought I would ever do um, that were just amazing. And I love the family that I worked for. Um, and then Sandy Hook happened and uh, a kid with that, uh, autism walked into a classroom and shot up and killed a bunch of first graders and staff. And I decided, you know what, I got to go help, try to help on this. And that's why I started Trident and Shield in 2013. And uh, we've been doing it ever since. So that's why I think you should listen to me. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions on what I covered. You know, I'd be more than happy to answer questions about Boston Police or the SEAL teams or any of that other uh, stuff as you come up. I'm sure there's some type of delay between here and uh, what you guys, uh, you know, between what you typing and me asking questions. So as they come up and I see them, I'll answer them. Um, so... We started this channel for you guys. We wanted the individual consumer to be able to have the best level of training, you know, millions, you know, tens of million dollars of training and experience that I can transfer, that, I, you know, that I have, I can transfer to you 
hopefully through this YouTube channel to make you and your family safer in the darkest hour. And we're going to cover everything from, you know, the, today we're talking about home defense. We're going to talk about, you know, how to remain safe out in public. We're going to break down, you know, crime footage. We're going to break down, you know, uh, ca you know, camera footage, crime footage that you guys can see. And we'll talk about where we could have headed this off and what to do. There's some people out there doing it right now. They're just not doing it at the depth that I like. And they're using some really bunk martial arts. You know, here's just a sorry thing I have to tell you. Uh, I don't mean to burst any bubbles, but, you know, pretty much most things outside of MMA, uh, mixed martial arts, which takes the best of each, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu, um, the rest of it's kind of crap. Um, you know, there's a lot of garbage out there. You know, you got, you know, boxing has some great pieces to it. That's incorporated in MMA, Muay Thai as well. And then everything else just gets kind of too fancy and becomes this coordinated dance that, if you don't have a willing participant, it doesn't really work. So, you know, we train to injure, you know, on self-defense, you don't train to win. You train to destroy your opponent because, you know, you, you're they're visiting harm upon you. And some people are not going to be able to help with any of that stuff. And that's where improvised weapons come along, uh, come along where, you know, teaching you how to use a carabiner or a screwdriver or, um, you know, three-in-one spray um and, and scissors or these improvised weapons um i can teach you how to use those really quickly and defend yourself in an active assailant or attempted rape or you know home invasion or somebody really trying to hurt you so you don't have to be mike tyson you don't have to be this um you know a, a navy seal or you know a mixed martial artist to actually survive the day um, and then we'll teach you things like situational awareness, uh, active planning. Um, you know, when, if you watch some of our, the video from yesterday, uh, we talk about barricading in there. We talk about defending your home. And I'm going to give you it as real as I can. I'm not just going to sit here at this desk forever. You know, we're going to take you up to the lab upstairs, the labs where I come. You know, basically my, you know, two car garage where I have heavy bags that we're going to demonstrate this work and you're going to see us use a carabiner on the bag. You're going to see you know, I try these weapon systems on things. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, you know, so we, um, you know, going to, you know, prove that things work or don't work. And maybe sometimes things that I might have suggested, I'll disprove them, you know, and say, hey, you know, that didn't work or, but we're going to test them. So, you know, in your darkest hour, when you go for a screwdriver, you go for a pair of scissors, if you go with that carabiner, that it works in your life, you know, you'll be able to defend yourself with it. And we're going to teach you how to do everything. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there the way they just touch on it, but they don't want to get granular. They don't want to get detailed. They don't want to get dirty and teach you how to use these things and where to use them. Um, because, uh, you know, they don't even have the, they don't have the knowledge base and they're just repeating the, the low level stuff that's out there. Um, or, you know, they're all wrapped up only in these weapon systems here, which, you know, I recommend firearms to everyone. You know, if you're labeled legally to carry one, I recommend one. That's the best weapon system known to man for defending yourself. Before firearms, a 900, uh, sorry, 900, a 90 year old lady, 105 pound lady would never win a fight against a 300 pound, you know, seven foot tall man. With a firearm, she can win. She can win every time. Um, you know, and that's something that we have to, uh, you know, really um, think about. You know, politics aside, these things are an extremely weapon uh, effective manner to protect yourself. Um, and there's a lot of uh, bad stuff out there that, you know, um, that we'll talk about. You know, when it comes to firearms, particularly active shooter, a lot of people um, have put their solution in their politics. And I'm going to exaggerate slightly. So, um, you know, you, you shouldn't do that. So if you're on the, the right, you think everyone should have a rocket launcher in your back in their back pocket. Right. If you're on the left, you want to uninvent all this and turn it into a, a nerf world. Neither one of those are going to happen. So we have to find what works in the middle. And what works in the middle is training. You know, a lot of people want to fix this with a gadget. A gadget is limited in scope. Gadgets don't save lives. People do. OK, so, you know, training goes with you everywhere. You know, I see a lot of schools who spend a lot of money 
on, you know, infrastructure spending and they do, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do a one button lock system that locks all their doors in one button. Well, that's great, but most of their doors are all glass. And so they just wasted all that money to buy themselves three seconds because, as you know, in Sandy Hook, he shot out the glass and came in. And since then, that's also happened in other places. So, you know, really, you know, finding the things that work and taking them, in, you know, to you, the consumer, so you and your family and your loved ones will be safe um, and will have an answer for, you know, some problems that may ever come your way. So Home Defense 101, if you haven't checked it out, I'm going to put it in the link after this. It's uh it's basically on there. It's home protection, home defense 101. It's like a 50 ish minute uh, video on how to, um, <laughs> on how to uh, basically defend your house. Right. So we talk about some great things in there. We talk about active pl or, or planning, you know, getting with your family and, you know, saying, Hey, if this happens, you know, at, you know, in the middle of the night, you need to go into this room and this is where we'll go as a family and we'll barricade in there, you know, or if something, if someone's at the door, you know, don't open the door at, you know, if someone's asking for a signature that doesn't look right, you know, if it's not a, U, a real UPS truck and, um, you know, if it's somebody with like some magnets on their car, you don't feel right, you know, just have them leave it or just go pick it up later. Don't open that if you're, you know, your teenage daughter is at home alone. You know, and then we'll talk about some great stuff like uh, some apps like Life360, which is a great app that allows you to track where your family is and communicate with them and gives you some really good tools. So I just really want to be able to give you access to top-notch consulting and have a place for where you can ask questions because I do this because I care, right? Every victim I ever met broke my heart. You can only you know, hug so many people, dry so many tears and wash off so much blood before it scars you down to your DNA. And when that day happens, you pray to Jesus that um, that you'll be able to help somebody from ever going through that. And that's what I want to be for you. So I do this because I care. For those of you who have connections to active shooters, whether it's um, you've been, uh, you've survived one, I don't care which one it is. You know, we started by doing it with, uh, you know, Route 91, uh, Vegas uh, mass shooting. We give away our course, our online course, our active shooter course to every survivor of every one of those events because we just want to help. All right. So shoot us an email, drop us a, 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 you know, a comment here. We'll reach out to you and we'll get you that course and you can be safer. Uh, or you can watch here. It's going to be spread out through all the content because God knows I'm finding that people don't have a palate for long content. Everybody wants short little things and I'm going to try to deliver that. So, um, you know, Eddie, you got any questions on anything I've said? Uh, it looks like it's so far it's just you and here, you and I in here chatting. Uh, I don't know if, you know, I'm new to this. It looks like I got four people watching. So if anybody has some questions, I'd love to answer your questions. Um, so let's get into um, a little bit of what we talked about. Eddie, we you <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks, man. So uh, for the home survivor stuff, so the planning part, right? Get with your planning and talk to them. Um, sit there and practice it. You know, here's one tip when you're talking about barricading and barricading is a skill and we touched on it. You know, I'll touch on it a little bit. Now we touch on the video that I mentioned before. Um, that's, a, that's, you know, on our page. Um, you're not, if you have kids or you have an elderly, you know, parent and your grandparent in your house and you help taking care of them, that's going to be the room you're going to want to barricade. So make sure you put the right furniture in there and you strategically place it. Don't just put some feng shui design out there where, you know, you've got, you know, the you know, wide open floor. That's all great. I want your room to look great and I want better housekeeping to give you, a, you know, an A plus, you know, review for your decorations. But make sure that you can get something in front of your door that you can actually barricade and stack it to an immovable surface, a.k.a. the wall. <laughs> the opposing wall so that they have to like disintegrate everything in there. Another thing is, is for those of you who can, I know not everybody owns their house, but for those of you who can make whatever room that's going to be your master bedroom, your walk-in closet, your kid's room, whatever it is, make sure you put a good door on there. Not these really thin solid core or hollow core doors. Go get a robust door with a nice deadbolt lock 
and um, and hopefully that you know and and use that and that's the foundation you're going to start your barricade on right you're going to go to bed every night lock the door right um, you know if you got dogs that's great I can't recommend an alarm system enough um, you know I talked a little bit about it on uh, Facebook earlier today uh, a lot of people put a lot of stock in these ring doorbells or these canary cameras and Arlo. I mean, I've got some Arlo systems, or Arlo cameras in my house. They are uh, to augment blind spots in my house, um, but they really give you a false sense of security. There's nothing better than an armed system that when it goes off, someone's going to call there and check to say you're okay, right? That is really important because at two in the morning when you hear beep, beep, sometimes you don't have the discipline to get out of bed. And if you watch our story, Lauren's got a, a, a great story in there. Hey, OXAO, I uh, really enjoyed your comments. Um, I hope you'll see that we're different from most in this industry. Um, we really are here because we want to help. And I'll tell you, everything that we do at Trident and Shield is done with emotional intelligence. There's a lot of bad training out there. That is like shock and awe, bad action flick. I mean, it's every one of these uh, training courses usually start off like a bad Terminator movie. And that shuts down a vast portion of the audience. We have the most diverse audience in the history of the world right now. And, um, you know, and if they're not, you want to deliver content in a manner which the most amount of people will take in. And I hope you'll see that that's exactly how we do ours. And the reason why we're able to reach the most diverse workforce in the history of the world is because they know we do it because we care. We pass the smell test. You come in here, I'm not trying to jam a political agenda. I'll tell you the truth and what I think and what my training experience is, and you may not agree with that and that's fine. I'm just telling you with my vast history with violence and having to fight for my life and having somebody try to kill me and people try to hurt me that you, um, you know, I, I can only tell you what works for me. So I hope you'll see that we're not here trying to jam any agendas down there. I'm going to advise you in different ways. So people ask me in the workforce, you know, um, you know, should I allow my employees to have weapons in the workforce uh, or should I have a no weapons policy or, you know, should I hire an armed guard? And all those are very complex questions. So here's something that I end up explaining to a lot of people who think a sticker on the wall, on the wall or on your door saying this is a gun-free zone is going to stop anything. That's a pipe dream, okay? What you've just done is you opened yourself up to liability there, meaning if I'm a law-abiding citizen and I'm not, and you deny me my right to protect myself in there, if something bad should happen inside of that venue and you didn't have an armed guard and you didn't protect me, then you're opening yourself up for liability. And that's something that I have to understand, you know, think. So when you have weapons in the workforce, right, or, or you allow weapons in your workplace, typically what you're afraid is negligence. Someone dropping a firearm and it going off or, you know, changing and, you know, an accidental discharge or someone leaving it around. And that's what you're afraid of, right? Which does happen with some foolish people, right? I mean, that's that, that happens. If you're, um, that, that's typically what that means. If you're not doing that, you're making, if that's not your reason, it's a political purpose. You just don't believe in guns. So you want to ban them from your workplace because you don't agree with them. And that's fine. That's your right because you're the boss or you set those policies. Just understand that the only thing you're really preventing there is negligent discharge. You will not prevent somebody who wants to commit murder by banning weapons. They're just going to walk in the door and disobey your sign, which depending on which state you live in, isn't even a crime. You know, in Virginia, it's a suggestion. That's it. So anyways, um, you know, so, you know, my job as a consultant is to advise you the ins and outs all around that, right? Yeah, I, correct, Eddie. I agree with you that if someone's trained, they shouldn't have it. And, and that's fine, you know. You know, I wish that was, yeah, I wish it was obvious as everyone too. You know, a lot of people want to de demonize uh, firearms and, you know, and I, and I understand the, the desire to do that, but vehicle attacks are, are the thing that keep me up at night. You know, it's going to be very hard to stop somebody from going and taking an F-250 
and hitting crowds. And that's what really, 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 you know, when I was speaking to the NBA or Major League Baseball, or DreamWorks Studios and all these companies that I've had the fortune to, uh, and Marshall McLennan and a bunch of other Fortune 500 companies, um, they, you know, I asked them what their concern was and their concern about drones and whatever. And I said, drones require a little bit of expertise and the scope of the damage they can do is very small. Whereas, you know, somebody with an F-250 with a lift kit um, and a rifle can really, really do some harm in and around these sports venues uh, or parades or anywhere where you know, you know, you know, heck, five o'clock when everyone gets out of work in New York. Right. I mean, it's just it's just terrible. So, you know, we really need to get off the blame game. I really believe that, you know, there is a way to stop these things. And it's about informing just like the great, great news out of Napa Valley today. I mean, awesome, awesome news out of Napa Valley today. We had a middle a middle school uh, school hero. I don't know if it was a boy or girl. The name hasn't been released, but uh, they stopped or that person stopped an active shooter today. Um, no, no, uh, I, uh, yeah, he's talking to Eddie. Okay. Um, so, you know, we had a hero in Napa Valley today. So a middle school student, um, and hold on, I've got their information here. Um, but a middle school student in Napa Valley, 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 Napa Valley, uh, prevented an active shooter from happening at River Middle School and Vintage High School. Uh, he noticed someone who, was acting bad or erratically or had some bad um, things going on. And that person, the act of the, the suspect threatened him and said, if you tell him I'm going to kill you. And he still, uh, that person, I don't know if it was a he, he, she uh, came forward and still uh, told authorities and they actually caught him before he could act. He had the equipment, he had the plans, he had everything. And that kid is a hero. And I wish we could splash his face across every newspaper instead of showing these monsters faces. I want to see the hero that stopped them. I want to see the person who celebrates them. And everybody in Napa Valley, you guys should start a GoFundMe page for to pay for that, <clears throat> to pay for that kid's college because that kid is a hero and your kids might not be around if it wasn't for him. And I just wish we celebrated our heroes more, um, you know. Yeah, and, and I, you know, uh, OXAO, um, you know, it's so easy to take things out of context um, in YouTube and in the internet. There's so many trolls out there. People get their defensive armor up first because you're so used to getting eviscerated. I mean, people tell me all the time, um, you know, say mean things to me all the time, and I'm just trying to help, right? You know, um, so, you know, it's it's all good. As long as we all come from this awesome and smart kid looking out for his surroundings. Yes, that's true, the analyst. Smart kid who really at risk to himself, right? Not somebody who even just anonymously reported, which is heroic in his own right, was threatened. I will kill you if you tell anyone and knew that that kid was capable and still came forward. So, you know, that that's the stuff I wish we could talk about all day. But that is awareness working this thing full circle, right? That is people looking out, seeing something, saying something. The more success stories we have like that, the more we're going to stop these things because the more empowered the population becomes. Um, and that's really, really, really important when it comes to active shooter. I, I know we kind of uh, turned into an active shooter here instead of home defense, but home defense is, again, I just wanted to introduce you guys to that. That's here on uh, on our channel below. It's Home Defense 101, how to protect your house. I'm here for the guys here. That The reason why I do live events is for people like OX, Eddie, and uh, the analyst to answer your guys' questions. You know, I'd love to give you guys free consulting and tell you what I think. You know, you don't have to agree with me, but I am willing to wade in on pretty much all these topics. Um, and um, I remember, OX, you asked me if there was any standard over on Eddie's uh, YouTube page for anyone in the industry. Um, and I, there is none, and there needs to be. Um, you know, anyone who ever took karate class once or fired a gun once wants to call themselves an active shooter expert. And the re when I was doing my market analysis before I stepped into this, there is some horrible stuff out there, including the number one program that's out there. Um, it's absolutely atrocious, absolutely atrocious. 
Um, you know, when you're telling people to throw, uh, you know, and again, I don't want to beat up on anyone. Um, you know, I, I hate this part of the industry, but I want to explain something. So you see stuff in the news where, you know, some buddy who wants to do something and I, and I'm happy that these schools want to do something, right? You get a principal who, you know, puts Riverstone in his classroom as their weapons, uh, for kids to fight back against the shooter. And I am so pumped that that guy is thinking to do something, right? He's trying to protect his kids. Unfortunately, he's being trained by people who have no idea what they're doing. All right. So let me explain why a rock doesn't work against a Glock or a pistol. A rock is a ranged weapon. All right. That is what I understand. This has caused a lot of misunderstanding. Yeah, it totally has, uh, Ox. You know, and there's a lot of yokels out there who do some horrible stuff. You know, let me, so I'll, I'll, then I'll get back into this. So, so I know of people who've been certified with a certain uh, program that rhymes with uh, Dallas. <laughs> we'll say it's, it rhymes with Dallas, who have come into a classroom and started firing blanks. Yeah, a firearm is a range weapon, exactly. Um, no, a rock is a range weapon as well. So I'm, I'm going to get into that. So that uh, this program rhymes with Dallas. And they're teaching, or he came in and just pulled out a firearm and started firing blanks without telling anyone. And that is absolutely terrible. This could be also good for self-discipline. Anyone, someone, you're the only one there and no cop authority. Well, correct, absolutely. So coming in and just irresponsibly you know, doing that and shooting a blank blanks in a classroom. You know, he's lucky no one there was carrying there, or else he might have ended up with a you know a couple of holes in him. But it also causes trauma. The news, the five o'clock news, scares the bejesus out of everyone. All right, it really does. There's no need to scare anyone anymore. Let's give them empowerment. Let's give them intelligent, you know, training that's going to teach us how to fight our way out of this mess. All right, and that's what we're about. So. So anyways, another one came up where I've, I've heard store horror stories where somebody comes up and puts his fingers through their heads and says, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. Yeah, I, I, I don't blame you, OX. So let's get back to rocks. So a rock, it can be, you know, they're advocating a rock being a ranged weapon. If you watch their training, they have people standing in the middle of the classroom throwing objects at a bad guy coming through the door. Well, when you go... Range weapon to range weapon. So a firearm is the most effective range weapon system in the history of man. All right. You don't want to meet that range weapon to main range weapon. It doesn't work. All right. The only way to stop this, if you've seen our training video, and if you go to our website, uh, Trident Shield, um, at tridentshield.net, you can see it. It's part of the highlight reel that's rolling. We teach you how to turn this into a paperweight by touching it. The only way to counter a firearm is with another firearm or putting your getting a hold of it and causing a malfunction. And that's what we need to teach people to do. So they're teaching the very opposite of what they should be teaching, which is they're teaching stay at range against the firearm, which does not work. Had to hit the gray zone with a, uh, with a rock. Yeah. I don't know what you're saying there, Eddie. Eddie. So uh, if you can clarify that, I can uh, talk on it. So, so anyway, so by teaching that, you know, it seems like it's a good idea, but it's not an informed, um, you know, it, you know, it's not an informed uh, way to go about it. You know, I can teach anyone, and I, you know, I show Lauren in our videos um, getting, you know, just grabbing a hold of a slide on a pistol, causing it to turn into a paperweight. Now, obviously you still have to subdue the target and fight, but you've taken their most effective weapon out of that. And if you're at range, you're not going to do that. I mean, if the guy doesn't enter the classroom because there's this bunch of people throwing rocks at him, he's just going to stay in outside the classroom and just hose down the classroom. It doesn't work. You have to ha know what the heck you're talking about. Just because you were a sheriff or a high school principal doesn't make you an expert on this. And you're really just doing a lot of harm, you know, when you're teaching stuff like that, you know, and I feel bad for these schools that are trying to do stuff, you know, they're going out spending money on a program and they're trying to think outside of the box. And then, you know, you have people telling them to throw Kansas soup or rocks and uh, hockey pucks was the last one. And, you know, my, my, I salute all those schools trying to do stuff. They're just getting bad advice. And that's because of the standard OX that we're talking about.
Um, you know, it's hard to stop somebody in a rock. Yeah. So because there's no standard, um, it can be really, really challenging. News, if you just view no matter right, wrong of topic, it also keeps people from critical thinking and they call you a con theorist if you don't believe them. And that's totally true. We've gotten to the point where we can't disagree anymore. You know, now everyone's evil, right? The second you don't agree with them, you call them evil. And it's really, um, it really becomes problematic because who wants to negotiate with evil? No one. You can't negotiate with evil. So the second you get somebody to believe that they're evil or that someone else is evil and just because of the way they think or because of some of their ideas, um, you know, you know, we did break down as a society, in my opinion. So I know I've been, you know, we've covered a wide variety of topics today. You know, um, I put all this stuff out here just to grab attention. Unfortunately, I need clickbait for people to look at my channel. So I have to pose with things in weird ways, just in hopes of driving traffic. You know, we're a new, uh, a new uh, a channel, as you can see. I mean, we've been around. I started one just to start one, but we haven't really been putting out content until, um, you know, December 26th is when I got this camera and this mixing board over here and all this stuff. And we actually started trying to do this right. What was up now, down and down is now up there and there is no middle. That's true. We can't agree that water's wet. Anytime I get 20 people in a room, um, they all can't agree that water's wet. Half of the 20 will, or 10 will say that water's wet. The other 10 will say you perceive water to be wet. It's not really wet. And they'll argue, you know, and then the name, you know, once they can't agree on anything anymore, uh, they'll start name calling. That's just the state of the world we're in, um, you know, and that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. So I've got some firearms on the table here. I've got a tourniquet on the table here. I've got an Israeli bandage. bandage. I've got, you know, some, you know, some stuff on here that we can talk about. Very big question. How would I have handled the Las Vegas shooting if you were in charge? Um, okay. So I have a hard time Monday morning quarterback, but I'll tell you what I think should have happened. Um, it took an awful long time for um, for Las Vegas PD to make entry into that room. You know, we all heard originally that it was this, you know, really awesome response, and then it turns out, where's the sock full of quarters? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sock full of quarters will work, or a bar of soap, all that stuff, you know. Um, but so Vegas, you know, we have to start pushing to the threat. All right, so law enforcement has a serious challenge. And if you look at the synagogue and if you look at Pulse Nightclub, if you look at Vegas, this is kind of what happens. They all know what they're supposed to do when the bullets are still shooting, right? That's an active shooter, and they're supposed to push to the threat and put to, and stop the threat. But during all three of those, the shooting stopped at some point. Now, I wish I could make everyone a hero, and I wish I could make everyone brave. And until you're standing at the door and there's a lot of – you know, weapon fire going on, you don't know what you're going to do, right? And you saw that in Parkland and there's a lot of other places. But um, I kind of lost my train of, train of thought there. Oh, so anyways, so, you know, until you're standing at the door, you, you're not going to know how, what you're going to do. But when these, you know, when cops, when the bullets are flying and law enforcement is responding, they know what to do. Then when they stop shooting, like they had in a lot of these cases, they kind of surround it and treat it like it's a perimeter, you know, like it's a hostage situation. And you get a lot of people that bleed out and die during that. And that's unacceptable. You know, in my professional opinion, and, you know, opinions are like, you know what, everyone's got one. But my professional opinion is once you've had an active shooter, you have to treat it like it's an active shooter until you confirm that the guy's dead or in custody or the attacker's dead or in custody. And this pull back and hold a perimeter because we're scared of being injured, that's, I mean, that's human nature, you know, and I understand uh, that you can't mandate bravery, but um, that's how we have to handle these things. Uh, OX, did that answer your question? All right, so the end was they play dumb about guns and don't want to believe or admit that guns can be used for good, and that's why these schools use rocks, et cetera. They're really trying to minimize how it can be used for the, uh, you know, for other than bad. Um, well, it was beyond comprehension that Metro spent 30 minutes 
a floor below the shooter, having water, taking a leak, checking the venue and just what the hell they were doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Kinda. All right. So my answer to that, and I'll clarify for you is that you have to go in there and you have to make entry in that room and you have to stop the attacker while the bullets are still going. All right. The way to handle that is you're going to have to, in the future, if you're going to have an open venue, you're going to need sniper overwatch. And um, that's just part of it. Or you're going to have to get rid of open air venues, you know, because you can't put secret service up there, but you're going to have to have sniper overwatch. And if something like that happens, they're going to have to identify it. But if you got to remember, we're all looking through hindsight. I mean, I've heard sounds that I can't explain in Vegas. You know, sounds were different cadence of firing, different kind of stuff going on where I, that's a different echo pattern. It's not one firearm doing that. And I don't know if it's the police returning fire. I don't know if it's concerned citizen returning fire. We haven't really heard any of that. Um, so, you know, again, um, you know, I've got people in law enforcement there that I'd be willing to talk to you offline on what we, you know, on some things going on there, but very confusing. You know, I don't know how many people knew, you know, within the first, we'll say five minutes, you know, law enforcement, if they knew where it was at. Um, so anyways, um, so, <clears throat> so I hope I answered your question a little bit better there. You have to push to the threat and stop the threat while they're still shooting. And when they, if they stop, still sh stop shooting, still make entry and still go in there. You got to do it or else they're just going to rearm and redo some other things and people are going to bleed out during that time. It was just really horrible. Sniper overwatch, the electronic device that finds a sniper, or do you mean someone that could shoot back at the sh I mean someone like if you're going to have a venue with 25,000 people, you're going to have to hire police snipers to be up and overwatch in higher positions to be able to, to, to take out a shooter if that would happen. Shot spotter, it, you know, we had it in Boston. It was highly high. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Is the learning system that's out there? All that does is tell you that someone's shooting. It doesn't make the cops respond any better. Hey, but oh, I need the car keys. So proof that these are my car keys. The wife needs to go to the grocery store, and uh, this is my ridiculous set of car keys. They're my car keys, and yes, I do carry all that on there. But anyways, so. Um, so, so anyways, uh, Eddie says, hi, Laura. Hi. She says, hi, I don't know if you heard that. So, yeah, so again, these gadgets, these are things that will can aid an assistant, but they're not going to stop right, anyone from, from doing that. You know, so again, having, you know, you know, drones flying around, making sure that you can tell where the bad guys are at during these open air venues. You know, if I owned an open air venue right now, I'd be concerned. And I'd be putting a dome on it like the Dallas, Dallas Cowboys Stadium because I know that whole industry is concerned about drones. Anything else, guys? I mean, I'm, I'm here for you. I know we got five people. Um, I think Kevin's one of them. The analyst is another one. Eddie's one of them. Um, am I missing anybody else out there that wants to comment? Don't be scared. Um, but I hope you found this valuable. I love getting on here and freestyling during this uh, – Oh, and thank you, Eddie. Thank you for your support. You know, if you guys could help me get out the word, I just want to save lives and I just want to put out content. And, you know, I, you know, I'm not afraid to get out there and answer questions in this freestyle, just like this. I'd love to get on here and see where it goes and answer questions. And, you know, from everything from, you know, I was a combat medic. I was an 18 Delta, you know, an IDC independent duty corpsman, which is the highest level of training can do as a, uh, as an enlisted man in the military. So I have a lot of experience in that. And we have all this stuff. Quick Q, what are the best choices for a poor sap that spent a lot of time visiting gum installations around DC? What quick Q, what are the best choices? Oh, so if you're doing a lot of government stuff and how how are you going to defend yourself at a government government facility, Kevin, when you're going through metal detectors and all that stuff? Just don't. True. I avoid DC like the plag. Um, hey, Paul Race, good to see you. <laughs> All right. As I knew, I was hoping you were on here, Paul. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, my, uh, you know, you, you didn't cut your leg off with your chainsaw today. And now that uh, you've got this, you know, carry a tourniquet with you, um, if it had penetrated a little bit further. So, you know, um, government buildings are tough. 
Um, you know, I recommend a pen like this one here. It's a tactical pen. It's got a window break. It's made by uh, Gerber. This is a good one that you can have. Um, carabiners are also good for put on your keys uh, that you can use as a pair of brass knuckles. Uh, oh, my gosh, that sound bad. Chainsaw through the leg. Yeah, he almost, I mean, his pants stopped him. He ruined his pants, but he's in good shape. You know, Paul. <laughs> So but he was like, man, that tourniquet, I can see what you mean. That would really suck to have to walk a few acres with your, you know, your leg cut off there. So anyways, using the, this carabiner, you don't want to use it so much like this. You can, as long as you're reinforcing it with your thumb and it's the right size. It can smart your hand. Where this really excels is at a hammer fist, where you're pounding down and really targeting bony problem, the skull you know, and bony prominences with this. That's where a carabiner really excels. You know, a lot of people say in a hurt trance, it doesn't feel good. It's not a set of brass knuckles, which is designed for this, but it does work. It does, I was seeing if I had my brass knuckles over there, but it does really work well. Um, so Kevin, so, you know, a, a carabiner like that, and it doesn't even have to be metal. You could do a, a, you know, if you needed one, you could do, uh, there's, some real, there's some really heavy duty plastic ones out there that'll work really well. Analyst, there were 5G. All right, hold on. So let me see. Analyst, how do we know it wasn't a 5 5G? I've seen some cities where with those can like device on poles. We need to look further. They would be on a hotel roofs. Just don't all oh, good luck. The analyst, yep. Oh my gosh, that sounds bad. Chain so I think like analyst, there were a 5G. However, there were other things I would be happy to show you message me. So they're, they're talking about individual stuff in um, about Vegas there that I don't want to just vomit out to the uh, to the to the sky uh, or to the to the internet. So if you guys want to, you know, take that, you know, private about that, that's good. Um, but basically, I think, you know, having, you know, snipers up there to do overwatch, uh, if you're going to have 50,000 people, I know in Boston as police, as police officers, we had snipers out there overwatching the marathon or parades during, uh, the, you know, the Patriot Super Bowl wins or all that other stuff. So, um, that stuff is, is, you know, pretty common and I just, it needs to start. It needs, if you're going to have an open air event, you need to have that, um, you know, Hotels also bear some responsibility with this, and they really need to start doing their due diligence on, you know, making sure that people aren't bringing up, you know, 15 guns and, you know, how many thousands of rounds of ammunition up there. I mean, that's just kind of, uh, kind of uh, unforgivable, you know, and then for them to counter sue their own, uh, you know, the victims is unforgivable to me too. I don't know how anyone can stay in those hotels after they do that. I'm sure their lawyers said, hey, we're going to be out of business. You need to counter shoot us, slow this down. But it's still, I mean, what a PR nightmare. I can't even imagine suing people for getting shot up. Uh, it's just awful. Yeah, disgraceful. So anyways, um, so any other questions we got out there? I'm going to wrap this up. I know the president's speaking at nine o'clock and a lot of people are going to be cutting out for that. Um, I just really wanted to say that I'm going to be here at least once a week doing live events like this where they can go whichever way they, we want them to go. And I'll be more than happy to teach you everything I can. All right. Uh, most people pay me a lot of money to talk to them for an hour one-on-one. <laughs> -on -one. So, um, you know, companies pay me an awful lot of money to do that. Um, so without, and thank God for, <laughs> yep, you know, I'm happy. I'm, you know, president's trying to do the best job that he can. I believe that. So um, thank you very much. You guys are awesome. And, um, you know, God bless you. God bless America. Thank you.